Welcome to this lecture. In this video, we will be seeing about what is link budget and how can we calculate an unplink link budget and a downlink link budget. So, what is a link budget in satellite communication? It is a parameter which actually relates the transmit power to the received power. So, as the signal gets transmitted for about 37,000 kilometers, it uh, gets affected with the noise as well. So this noise also has to be considered when you calculate the received power. So the signal has a very high frequency, so we term it as carrier frequency in, in place of signal frequency and the noise power given as M0. This noise power is actually the product of Boltzmann constant and the system noise temperature, usually the receiver systems. And the carrier power is given by the product of the effective isotropic radiated power and the gain of the receiving amina divided by the losses which happens in the link. Okay, and finally, it happens to be the effective isotropic radiated power into the gain of the receiving amina divided by the loss of into the noise temperature of the receiver system into the Boltzmann constant. So when we take the decibel value of this 10 log of this, it happens to be the effective isotropic radiated power of the transmitter plus G by T is nothing but the figure of merit or gain margin of the receiver minus the losses minus the Boltzmann constant. In short, for a downlink, I can say the carrier to noise ratio as effective isotropic radiated power of the downlink g by t of the downlink minus the losses minus the Boltzmann constant the similar force for the uplink. So what is a downlink communication? Downlink communication is the communication which happens from the satellite to the ground station terminal B. So this satellite is actually the transmitting station now so it has an effective isotropic radiated power in terms of pt and gt the effective isotropic radiated power is the term which is denoting the transmission efficiency of the transmitter and the term g by t is the receiver's efficiency which is given by gain of the receiving antenna minus the receiver noise temperature in addition to that, these are the gain parameters and there is a losses which are accompanying between the link connecting the satellite and the terminal B. So there is waveguide losses, there is free space losses and the atmospheric losses and this losses happens over the entire bandwidth. So waveguide losses happens both at the transmitter and this waveguide losses LRWG happens at the receiver part. This free space loss is accommodated due to the various phenomena of the environment like uh, multipath component fading and channel fading components. And this L suffix here is the atmospheric attenuation and this whole attenuation losses happens over the entire bandwidth B. So, in order to find the carrier to noise ratio at the receiver part, what we do is we add this EIRT and we add this G by T and subtract all these losses. So, EIRT is nothing but the sum of power transmitted plus the gain of the transmitting antenna and uh, the G by T is the gain of the receiving antenna minus the noise temperature minus the losses the whole terms which is given in this bracket is given up here and the Boltzmann constant is in decibels it is 228.6 minus 228.6 and similar cases happens for uplink budget. So what is an uplink? The transmission which happens between the ground station A to the satellite A. So this is an uplink. So here the transmitter terminal A is actually the transmitter which is having an effective isotropic radiated power in terms of PT and GT and the satellite which is having G by T in terms of GR and TRS and the losses happens both at the transmit part, receive part and the link over the whole bandwidth. 
okay so you can see this carry to noise ratio is calculated so again we have to sum this ARP of the transmitter G by T of the receiver and subtract the losses and the Boltzmann constant okay so here you can see the ARP, EARP is the sum of PT and GT G by T is the difference of gain of the receiving antenna and the receiving noise temperature minus the losses which is happening transmit waveguide loss, free space loss, atmospheric loss, receiver waveguide loss plus the bandwidth minus the Boltzmann constant. So to find the average EARP it is PT plus GT minus the transmit waveguide loss and for the receiver it is gain minus the noise temperature minus the losses due to the waveguide. So we look for a problem. So here in a link budget calculation at 3.95 GHz, which is the C band for parameter given in the table, calculate the downlink carrier to noise ratio. So the transmit power is given, the transmit waveguide losses is given, antenna gain is given, free space loss is given, atmospheric absorption is given, receive waveguide, receive antenna gain is given, receive waveguide loss is given. System noise temperature is also mentioned, Boltzmann constant is given, bandwidth is also given and what they ask is carrier to noise ratio. So how can we do? So the terms PT, GT, GR, TRS, L, so every terms in this calculation of carrier to noise ratio is given. So I just take this from the table here and substitute it in this equations and I get to the value 12.2 decibels. Similarly for this problem we calculate the uplink budget and uplink has the following parameters as given in the table and we are asked to calculate the carrier to noise ratio and flux density of the spacecraft. So the given parameters are the transmit power, transmit waveguide loss, transmit antenna gain, spreading loss which happens in the link uplink atmospheric attenuation, free space losses, receive antenna gain is given, receive waveguide loss, system noise temperature, Boltzmann constant and the bandwidth. So how can I calculate the carrier to noise ratio? So carrier to noise ratio, again I have to sum the CIRP and the G by T, subtract the losses and the Boltzmann constant. So I take it from this table, back substitute in this equation and then I get to the answer 31.3 decibels and for finding flux density of this spacecraft so it is the average EIRP so how much effective this antenna is transmitting and how much is it getting received so this whole EIRP minus the spreading loss and the atmospheric attenuation so effective EIRP is the sum of PT GT minus the waveguide loss minus spreading loss minus the atmospheric attenuation gives me minus 84.4 decibel water meter square. I hope this would have uh, this would be helpful for calculating your uplink and downlink budgets for your problem. Thank you.